this is really weird. I was absolutely convinced that the only people that would be uh, sat on a muddy field waiting for me were, well, two groups of people, really. Firstly, the people that I love and are camping with me and have camped with me in previous years and all those kind of people, godparents to my children. <laughs> there they are. Um, all those sorts of people. Um, but also the people that were trying to get a really good seat for Steve Chalk. Um, so that was, that was it. So I brought sweets and I brought a raffle. All right, so if you've not got a free raffle, it's not a church do without a raffle as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's a free raffle and you can win a tea cozy. So if you've not got a raffle ticket, if you put your hand up like this, oh, there's lots of people. It's also a really easy way of knowing how many people came to listen. So, um, which, because <laughs> you can get the numbers, you see. Um, so uh, I think Graham Botley, the gorgeous, wonderful, lovely husband, is, is wandering around with raffle tickets, um, and other people are too. Uh, you don't have to look like a crazy charismatic and keep your hand in the air. You can put it down, someone will find you. Um, and stewards, if you could come forward, that would be lovely, because I've got sweets that I need to hand out. So if, you've got a, if you're a steward, and if you're not a steward and you'd like to hand out sweets, that'd be lovely. So here's sherbet lemons. There you go, pass those around. What else we got? Oh, here's refreshers. Oh, that box is a bit weak. All right. Brilliant. Um, and it, oh, just a minute. There you go. And there's chup chup lollies. Other lollies are available. Oh, where's the brown top? I love it. Um, Godson, it's a bit early for you to be having sweets. You're not allowed any. That's Jacob, that's my godson there, look. Brilliant. Uh, so get yourself some sweets and um, I'll tell you a little bit about what I do and what I'm up to and that sort of stuff. Am I completely off camera here? All right, great. Um, so my name's the Reverend Kate Bolly. I am a vicar in three rural churches in North Nottinghamshire, South Yorkshire border. Uh, they've got the wonderful names of Blythe, Scrooby and Ranskill, which are fantastic names. Uh, and there is nobody from any of my churches here at Greenbelt. Um, for lots of reasons, but partly because I won't let them come. Um, that's not true. <laughs> but uh, the church of Scrooby... Who is there? Oh, you didn't tell me you were coming. Um, the church of Scrooby is a wonderful place, tiny little village, and of course with a name like Scrooby, when they have a party, it's called a Scrooby-Doo, which we like, oh, well, it's true, um, but of course most of them are over 75, so none of them get that reference, um, they don't know why I laugh every time. Um, I also work as an FE chaplain, um, so I look after 16 to 19 year old students, um, I do things like... Um, uh, housing, drugs counselling, that sort of stuff. I hand out uh, contraceptives and I do all that kind of thing. My bishop was very, very wise when um, I was looking for a job and he said, if we put, just put her in a church, she'll break it. So we need to find something for her to do that's um, beyond a church context. So I do chaplaincy work as well, which is fantastic. But that's probably not where you know me from. Um, about two years ago, uh, a wonderful, I do lots of weddings. My churches are very, very beautiful. And we've got lovely stately homes near us and all sorts of stuff. Um, and I got together with the owner of the local country house and said, you know, tell me about your weddings. And at that stage, most of the weddings were being done in the house itself. And I thought, well, it wouldn't be great if we could get people to have their weddings in our churches. Um, and what had happened is uh, there'd been a whole lot of no had been said to a lot of couples. Um, and I think that's true of uh, the Church of England generally. People have heard the word no from us a lot. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice for them to hear the word yes uh, for a little while? So I started saying yes to people wanting to get married in, in our churches. And um, particularly, I said yes to a lovely couple called Gary and Tracy who had been together for nine years. They'd been living together, and Tracy had been waiting nine years for Gary to ask her to marry him. She waited ages and ages, and she was very excited about her wedding day. I'm very aware I'm getting closer and closer to the edge. Actually, they did have a podium for me to stand behind, um, but it was too high. <laughs> we have, a, we have a, like a little thing at the... Cr I've got a, remind me, I'm going back to Gary and Tracy, won't you? Um, I let, they have a little podium thing. At the, it's a lec, is it called a lectern, isn't it? That's a proper word. That's the word the vicar should use. They have a little lectern at the crematorium where I do funerals. And um, when I stand behind it, I can't see over the top of it. And a disembodied voice at a crematorium is not a good thing. <laughs> it kind of freaks people out. <laughs> 
So I got myself a little stool to stand on at the crematorium, and it's one of those kind of stools, one of those footstools that your nanan likes to put her feet on. Um, and the Krem boys decided that it'd be really, really funny to shorten one of the legs on it. Because <laughs> the Krem boys are a bit like that. And so I stood, are you, do you work at a crematorium? You were nodding enthusiastically. Do you work at a crematorium? Oh, yeah, 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 you're curate. Um, and so I stood, I stood on the stool in the proper, you know, serious grown-up vicar kind of thing. I went, I am the resurrection and the life. <laughs> anyway, Gary and Tracy, waiting a long time. You're going to have to keep up, by the way. This is what it's like. Imagine being married to me. Anyway, so um, Gary and Tracy, waiting a long time to get married. And Tracy said to me, oh, Honestly, Lord, here I am. Is it? Now, this is the opportunity to hold hands with someone next to you. Ah, oh, that's bad. Is, it mood? is the makeup really that bad? Is that why you've gone for the moody lighting? It's a bit harsh. Oh, right, okay. Um, so anyway, Gary and Tracy, where were we? Gary and Tracy. Uh, long time, what do, you, what do you want? They said, we'd love something a little bit different. We'd love something uh, a little bit different. What do you do? Well, that's a very dangerous question to ask a person like me um, because I do lots of different things. Oh, there we go. Uh, I do lots of different things. And, and so I said, I'd love to do a flash mob. Now, I know flash mobs are a bit 1990s, but the Church of England is always at least 20 years behind anyone else, so I thought we could get away with it. Um, and Tracy said, oh, yes, that sounds like a great idea. I'll organise the choreographer and the rehearsals, which wasn't quite what I had in mind. So Gary and Tracy organized eight weeks' worth of rehearsals with a very small group of their friends and family. Uh, they were all on Sunday afternoons when I'm usually dunking babies in tepid water, which in any other job would be child abuse, but in my job they let me get away with it. So, um, so I wasn't able to get to any of the rehearsals, so they sent me a little clip for me to practice at home, which, of course, I didn't do um, because, you know, I didn't do it. Uh, and then Gary and Tracy, wedding day, um, and I said, I now pronounce you husband and wife, at which point the music starts. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing some of you might have seen it. And it goes, everybody dance now. And I start dancing, and everyone starts dancing. And before long, the whole room has erupted in crazy dancing. And what happens halfway through, the video is there's two little old ladies who get up and walk out with a very grumpy look on their face. I'd just like to assure you what I'm having written on my tombstone is Auntie Betty was going to the loo, okay? <laughs> she has a bladder the size of a walnut. She had to get to the toilet. Um, in fact, she wrote me a letter a few weeks afterwards because basically everyone's going, oh, it's disgraceful, those were poor women that had to leave because they were so offended. And she actually wrote me a letter and said, I'm really sorry you've had hassle, but, you know, I did have to go to her. And I can't listen in my planet. Um, she didn't write it like that, but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we did that. It got six million hits on YouTube. It went absolutely crazy, 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 crazy. Gary and Tracy were away on honeymoon. So I found myself in the middle of a bit of a media storm, really. And it all went a bit... <laughs> I'm finding this slightly disconcerting. It's a big stage as it is. Um, I wonder what's in that black box. <laughs> Tiger. Um, anyway... <laughs> Uh, media storm, media storm. Um, so lots of phone calls, lots of people uh, phoning me up, asking for interviews, uh, BBC, ITV, all that sort of stuff. Now, I'm a natural-born show-off, if you haven't already worked it out. I love being the centre of attention. This kind of thing is exactly up my street. One-to-one -one with somebody in their house terrifies me. Stood in front of lots of lovely people like you, whose faces I can't really see, is, uh, is brilliant, and I really enjoy it. And so I loved that week, all right? I had a really great time. I had such a laugh. And I started to think a little bit too much of myself. But what's brilliant is God has a really good way of keeping our ego in check. So I got phone calls coming in left, right, and centre. I had New Zealand uh, press, uh, some press from New Zealand phone me, Australia, South Africa, Al Jazeera. <laughs> that was cool. Um, so Al Jazeera phone, uh, and then and then I was doing the school run, and the, my my mobile rang in my pocket because of course all my information is public. I am a vicar. I'm really easy to get hold of. Mobile phone rang in my pocket, and it was a lovely lady on the phone who said, um, 
hello, is that the Reverend Kate Bartley? And I said, yes, it, yes, it is. And she went, hi, it's Penny from Sky here. And I said, oh, hello, Penny from Sky. Uh, listen, Penny from Sky, I'm about to go and do the school run. So here's my email address. If you could send me through a list of questions so I've got time to um, think about them. And then I'll give you a call back and we can do the interview then. There was a, a pause for about 30 seconds, at which point Penny from Sky said, I'm really sorry, Reverend Bolly. I've got no idea what you're talking about. I'm phoning to see if you want to update your Sky Sports subscription. <laughs> which kind of killed it a bit, if I'm honest. But that's all right. So God has a really good way of keeping us humble and reminding us that, you know, of the reality of it all. So that all happened, talking of reality. Did you see what I did there? Um, but all that all happened, and then um, it, it all went a bit crazy. And so you, you become, I, I did a bit of telly, I did all that sort of stuff. And I've done drama stuff when I was little. So I used to do uh, little plays on the radio when I was little, and I used to go to drama school and all that youth theatres and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so what happened then was I got a phone call in, um, I think it was about January time. After the flash mob broke in the summer, the following January, I get a phone call onto my mobile phone, um, and it's uh, from a, a, a beautiful, a lovely young lady who said, hello, is that a Reverend Kebab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm from a show called Gogglebox, and at which point I dropped the phone, because I'm a, I was a massive Gogglebox fan at this stage. It, we were two series in. The first series of Gogglebox was uh, four programs. I think it was on, on a Thursday night at like quarter to 11 at night. So it was a real graveyard shot, uh, slot. And then um, the second series of Gogglebox, it was, a, it was a slow burner. So about halfway through the series, people started talking about it. And like you, uh, me, I, I sort of heard about this show via my friends. And people were saying, it's absolutely brilliant. And then people explained to me what it was, which was me, you watched people watching telly. And I thought, that just sounds rubbish. That sounds like it's the end of TV as we know it. It's, you know, poppy in itself. It's all that sort of stuff. It, this is, an, this is well, who thought of that? What a stupid idea. Um, and so uh, it's, not that, it's not as bad as flock stars, though, is it? Let's face it. Flock stars? Seriously. Anyway, so nobody else watched that. Is it just me that watches really bad telly? So... Um, Gogglebox phoned and said, would you be interested? Now, every series, they look at about 20 families, 20 new families to go on each series, and they usually pick up with one or two. So we were fully prepared that they might not take us on. So they came around to the house, very glamorous media types, came around with cameras and showed us. Very, it's, you've not tried Ray Ard with them what, lollies, have you? Let me know, there's loads left. Who's not had a lolly? I don't want to lob them because health and safety will go mad. Um, all right, I'll put them at the, bit, at the end. We'll put them at the front. You can come and get some. Where was that? Goggle box. Right, so um, they came. Uh, they took some pictures, and they also showed us little photographs of people. So they showed us pictures of, uh, you know, like, Shrel, uh, Cheryl Fernandez Vecini. They showed us pictures of her. They showed us the pictures of Anton Deck, and we couldn't tell them apart. And they showed us pictures of um, Margaret Thatcher, at which point I'm from Sheffield. I grew up in the 80s. I burst into tears. And I think that was the moment, not in a good way, by the way, and I think, I think that was the moment where they thought, oh, here we go. And they also asked, it was really interesting, because they said to me, um, uh, who do you want to sit next to you? And I said, well, I watch telly with my husband, Graham. Where is he? Graham, there he is. Look, over there. <laughs> Are you giving him a clap because you feel a bit sorry for him? <laughs> <laughs> don't, you don't need to feel sorry for him. Um, he says loads, by the way. He does talk, honestly, I promise. <laughs> he just can't get a bloody word in edgeways. Um, so, uh, where were we? Yeah, so they filmed us doing all that sort of stuff. I burst into tears. Um, and they did say to me, who do you want to watch telly with? And I said, well, it would normally be Graham and the dog. That's, what, that's how we watch telly and the kids, perhaps. Um, but, and they said, well, we were just wondering whether perhaps you had a, an assistant at church that could watch television with you. And I sort of looked at them and they went, it would be great if it was a woman. It would be great if she had blonde hair. And I, th I thought... Well, they were trying to do a Dibley. They were trying to do a Dibley. They got a short round vicar and they were trying to get an Alice. <laughs> so Graham's my Alice. <laughs> you do it very well, darling. Um, so they, we did all that and we didn't expect to hear and then we got a phone call while we were on holiday saying that they would love to use us in the show. 
We had no idea what we were letting ourselves in for, to be honest with you. Uh, not a clue. But what they're trying to do with Gogglebox is they're trying to get a snapshot of Britain and life in the UK as it is. So they've got all sorts of ages, got all sorts of faiths, got all sorts of backgrounds. Um, but of course, they do cast us in a certain way. And the disconcerting thing about being the vicar on Gogglebox is that they did say to us, I said, why do you always show us like Newsnight? You always show us the political broadcast. You always show us Newsnight. Why can't we, you know, never put us in the edit when it's X Factor and stuff like that? And they said, yes, that's because you're the intelligent ones. is very, very worrying. Very, very worrying. So we film Gogglebox. We film about two nights a week. It is not a webcam on top. I don't want to spoil it for anyone. I'm not going to give away too many secrets. But it's, and it's no secret that it's not a webcam on top of the television. It's not there all the time. Um, they come in at, at scheduled times during the week and we sit down on our sofa with our dog Buster. Yay, Buster! Uh, with our dog Buster, who we never knew laid like that. All right? By the way, is there anybody in here who's not got a clue what I'm talking about? Is there any non-Gogglebox fans? Oh, God love you. And you came anyway. Bless you. You know, it's really, it's really interesting, actually, when you, when you talk to people that don't watch the show. Um, I was down at, just, are you ready? Are you ready? I was down at Lambeth Palace this summer. It was a bit disconcerting, actually, because we were in a lineup. It was like a wedding. And there was Justin and, and Mrs. Justin. Anyway, yeah, her. Stood next to each other. And <laughs> that was a bit enthusiastic giggle. And, uh, and we were shaking hands, shaking hands, shaking hands, shaking hands, shaking hands. And I got to Justin Welby and he went, I went, hello. And he looked up and he went, oh, I know who you are. <laughs> and I said, well, I know who you are. <laughs> But yeah, it was really interesting because we were at this garden party at, uh, at Lambeth Palace and there were all sorts of people there, you know, there were all sorts of sort of tele-Christians. Kind of, that sounds like Terry Christians, doesn't it? Which is not as an age joke if there ever was one. Um, so anyway, uh, tele-Christians and I, I'm kind of walking around uh, sort of schmoozing and going, oh, look, look, it's Martha from Bake Off and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I, I talked to the bishops and without exception, apart from the bishops that already knew me, lots of the bishops were saying to me, and what do you do? And I would explain what I did and then the bishops would say, and why are you here? Because it's a media thing. And I'd say, well, I'm on a program called Gogglebox. What's that? And I'd say, well, it's the biggest audience share of a Friday night show. The biggest demographic for Gogglebox is 15 to 35-year-olds, which I am very impressed that if you're out at that age and out of bed this morning to come and listen to me, I'm very, very thrilled. So thank you very much. Um, 15 to 35-year-olds is the demographic for Gogglebox. On the night it goes out, we get 4 million viewers. The accumulated figures over the week take it up to about 7 million on iPlayer and so on. So when you're being filmed in your jamas with your slippers on and your husband stroking the dog's back, it's a little bit disconcerting, all right? So I knew that, that that's the reach of Gogglebox. It's a massive, massive reach. Um, and yet... These lovely bishops who do an amazing job, who are fantastic human beings, had never even heard of it, had never heard of the show. In fact, lots of people in my parish uh, hadn't heard of the show. When I said, oh, I'm, I'm thinking, because I did talk it through with them, and I did say, I'm thinking of doing a show called Gogglebox. It's on Channel 4, at which point my treasurer at church went, Channel what? They don't really watch it. The parish don't really watch it. Apart from a couple of older people who every now and again will sidle up to me and going, I loved your tea cosy on Friday night. It was really nice. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know about Gogglebox, uh, but uh, anyway, let me tell you about Lambeth Palace. Finish that story off. So Lambeth, I'm sorry I'm all over the place, aren't I? Lambeth Palace, um, the bishops didn't know, but the guy who was serving the canapes, the girl who took our coat, they all, had all heard of it, which I guess brings me back to th thinking about why did we do it really? Um, the reason that we said yes to Gogglebox, the reason that we allow a camera crew into our house two nights a week, the reason that my kids get shoved upstairs uh, into their bedrooms for two evenings a week is because when I look at telly, most of the vicars I see on telly are not even real vicars. They're people pretending to be vicars. They're actors um, playing a part. And we all know that lots of people of faith on telly are portrayed as in a not very positive light because the extremes make a better news story. Okay, And that's true of all faiths. It's not just Christianity. The extremes make a better news story. And so, you, you know, you, I, I remember an interview with um, a programmer for the BBC who said, tell us about the Christians that are portrayed on telly. And he came up with Doc Cotton from uh, EastEnders. And you kind of think, mm, that's not really what my faith 
looks like. Um, so the reason we did it is because we thought it was really important that there were people of faith and a vicar in a collar from time to time sat on telly being normal. Uh, and obviously I use the N-word very loosely when I describe myself. But um, trying to be normal, trying to do normal things. Because I reckon that lots of people would love to have a faith but they don't think it's possible. They're not prepared to go to a cold building and be bored on a Sunday morning. They're not prepared to sit through that, but they would love to have a faith and do have a faith, but they just can't see it being modeled in, in the things that they have connections with. They might not know a person of faith. They might not see people of faith around them. And so I think it's very important that if you've got an opportunity to sit on a sofa with a dog collar on, um, if you're allowed to wear one, obviously. Don't wear one if you're not. That's a bit weird. <laughs> Although whatever floats your boat in the privacy of your own home is your business. Um, so, uh, oh, I've lost my thread there. So, yeah, um, I thought, we thought it was really important to do that. And it's a laugh, and we have a really good time. We get lovely, lovely, bright young media things up from that London. Um, tell, us about the, tell us about the tales of the big city, we say. No, um, they... <laughs> Whenever I go into London, I have to not point at buildings. Ooh. Um, so they, uh, they come up from London. They, you know, they're all bright young media things. We always insist that we sit down as a crew and as a team and eat together every evening. That's a brand new experience for them. You know, and to be in a vicarage, in fact, we had a riot laugh, didn't we, Graham? One of the first, where's he gone? Is he gone? Oh, thanks. He's there. That was quick. It's like, where's Wally? There you are. Um, in fact, the first time that they came to the vicarage, the first time they were sat down, I, I sort of looked at Graham and winked, and he kind of went, all right, like that. And so we sat down for dinner, and I made them all hold hands and say grace. <laughs> ah, it was so funny. And then the poor little runner arrived. Runners are brilliant, by the way. I love a runner. They're amazing people. If ever you want to get into telework, uh, being a runner is both the best job and the worst job, but runners are amazing people. In fact, I asked Graham for a runner for Christmas, but I didn't get one. But they just, they just go and do things for you. Go, could you just run to the co-op and get some milk, please? And, and you come up with more and more elaborate demands for the runner. It's lots of fun. Anyway... So the poor little runner arrived late because what happens is the runner arrives and we give them all the tapes at the end of the evening about 11 o'clock at night. Are you taking a picture? Or are you just checking your text? <laughs> feel a bit hurt now. Um, so the poor little runner arrives and the uh, producer says to me, let's have a laugh. So we sit him on a chair and all lay hands on him. <laughs> That's so much fun. He looks so awkward. And at the end, I said, come, Lord, amen, like that. And he opened his eyes and went, I'm Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. Um, so we do that, but the poor little runner, they have to collect the tapes, jump in the car and drive back down to London to get them to the edit. Um, so they get to London about 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Heaven knows how long it takes them to get from up in Newcastle, up near Scarlet Moffat's house and the, up, up near there. Um, I'm going to stop talking in a bit and we're going to have some questions. There's a microphone down there. Um, and you can ask some questions you want. There are some questions that we're not allowed to answer about Gogglebox. They're very strict about what we talk about and what we don't talk about. And they're very strict about what other stuff we do. So if we do any other media stuff, even this talk, you have to get approved. They do have to approve it because we signed exclusivity contracts. <laughs> Although I did say that God gets first dibs. So if he asks me to do something, they, they, kind of, they kind of have to back away. But we have a brilliant relationship with our editors. They do a fantastic job. Of course, they want to cast us in a certain way. So Graham speaks loads, but they do chop bits out. Um, they also, we also insisted that they didn't use the children. We didn't want them on telly for obvious reasons. And it's not all good, I'm sorry to say. It's not all nice stuff. Um, there is some horrible stuff. We do get a certain amount of abuse um, and a certain amount of stuff thrown at us. And because I'm public, uh, everybody knows where we live. I know where you live. Everybody knows where we live. Everybody can uh, get access to our address and so on. So we do get stuff through the door. We do get phone calls. We do get emails. We do get tweets, um, which range from everything from... My ch are my children in? No. We do get everything from um, threats and um, threats to my safety and their safety. And we do get um, stuff, uh, you know, sort of people wishing that we, we get ill and we get, I hope you get cancer and all that sort of stuff. Um, so you do get horrible stuff. So if you're a person of faith sat here this morning, if you would like to pray, that would be brilliant because that would be really nice because it, it does make, and I know there are lots of people who already pray for us, um, but if you could pray for us, that would be great because it is a vulnerable position to be in. And I think lots of people just think, oh, she, look at that, Kate, well, she's such a show-off, which I am. I'm a dreadful show-off, but it's like God's gone, 
Oh, you're a show-off. All right, then. You want to be a show-off? Oh, okay. We can do that. We can use that for the kingdom, uh, which is fantastic. And I'm absolutely privileged. But there is a price to be paid. There is a cost to doing it. Um, and it means that, you know, even when, we, even when we were in Crete a couple of weeks ago, we were chased down the street for selfies, which is fine. We don't mind having pictures taken. But it's a bit weird when you've, you know, you've got your swimming suit on and you're eating a kebab. And that's a bit odd. Um, and, you know, it happens in restaurants. We'll be sat having dinner and people will be taking pictures without asking across the room at us while our kids are there. And so then you have to go across and look like a complete diva and go, could you not take photographs, please? And, and, and that's a bit weird. That's, that is a, a bit weird. Um, it also causes great humor as well, of course. I was walking through Leeds train station recently and uh, I thought I'd got away with it. I got my dog collar and I was at work. And so I was walking through Leeds train station and uh, nobody had asked for any pictures. Nobody had said hello or anything like that. And I, I'm a vicar, so I kind of, it's in the job description. You sort of have to smile at people. If you've got a vicar at home that doesn't do that, you might like to talk to them. Um, you, you're supposed to smile at people. You're supposed to be nice. You're supposed to be kind. Um, and I thought I'd got away with it because no one had kind of made eye contact. And all I heard across a crowded Leeds ticket office was, Oi! Put some pants on the bloody dog! <laughs> Which I thought was fantastic. If you don't watch Gogglebox, our dog, Buster, lays at the side of us with his legs akimbo and his tackle out. Uh, he's very relaxed. He's, um, the number of people as well who say to me, is it a boy or a girl? Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? Perfectly obvious. He's a very, he's a very blessed boy, he's our buster. Um, how like his daddy he is. Uh, anyway. Ooh, bit of blue for the dads.